Joining us now for more is ESPN national reporter Coley Harvey, who's been reporting outside the hospital where Damar Hamlin is being treated. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, our thoughts are, are certainly with Hamlin's family, the Buffalo Bills, and the NFL tonight. It, what's the latest that you're hearing about how Damar is doing and the, the care that he's receiving from doctors? Uh, Lindsay, the latest that we're hearing on DeMar Hamlin's status is what the Buffalo Bills have tweeted today, and that is that he is in the intensive care unit here at University of Cincinnati Medical Center, uh, and he's still in critical condition. He was brought here Monday night just after that uh, scary injury occurred during the Monday night football game between his Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, it was taken to the ICU as soon as he arrived to this facility. Uh, we saw one of his teammates come. I actually had a chance to talk with Bills receiver Stefan Diggs as he was trying to make his way into the emergency room. We had to talk to a police officer to convince the police officer that this was really uh, one of the teammates of DeMar Hamlin in order to get Stefan Diggs into the uh, into the building. I want to point out tonight, later tonight, around 8.55 p.m. Eastern Time, fans who have been trying to flock to this area in order to pay their respects and to try to uplift the energy around DeMar Hamlin, they're going to be holding a candlelight vigil at that time. And the reason why 8.55 is because that's the moment 24 hours ago when Hamlin went down on the field at Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. So that's something that the fans Bengals fans, Bills fans, and even other NFL fans who have been flocking to the area are going to do. We have seen so many of these people come by laying flowers, laying down poster boards with encouraging messages, laying down balloons. This is their way of trying to just keep the spirits high in this city as an NFL player tries to continue to improve his condition. And, and Coley, you just talked about wide receiver Stefan Diggs visiting the hospital last night. How are the players and, and coaches dealing with this traumatic and just heartbreaking situation? Uh, this is this is one of the hardest things that many of them have experienced. I, I, I have been uh, covering sports myself for the last 15 years. I've never seen anything uh, to the degree of what I witnessed inside the stadium Monday night. I was there watching in the press box as that moment happened. We were, of course, not expecting to be covering this story and to see the anguish, to see the 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 heartbreak, the the desperation that was on the faces of those players in that moment that really let you know exactly how much they cared for their teammate. And and, and that's exactly what Stefan Diggs actually told me as he was walking in last night. He said that I, I, this is so frustrating. We don't know what's going on. We want these updates. I have to be here for my for my brother right now. Yeah, understandably so. You posted video to your Twitter account of a Bills fan talking about the outpouring of support that he's seen in Cincinnati. Let's take a listen. It was just uh, from in the stadium. Everybody was hugging. Everybody was crying. Everybody was showing humanity, you know, sympathy. It's more than football, you know. It's someone's life. It's, um, we're all individuals. We're all human and um, people with a lot of gratitude and a lot of sympathy. And even on my way here, um, just driving, I've got people honking at me and, and they give me the prayer sign and stuff and that's that's what we need in life you know we need a lot of love and happiness and support we need that love and happiness what's your reaction to hearing that fan talk about the power of sports to be able to bring people together despite the awful circumstances that's what we've been hearing so much in these last almost 24 hours or so now. I talked to one Bengals fan last night on the sidewalk just over here beside me, and he said, hey, here in Cincinnati, this is who we are. This is about brotherhood. We have to show up. It doesn't matter if it's one of our players, another player. This is who this city is. This is what this city is all about. Uh, that, that fan that we did just hear from, Andrew, a moment ago, I did speak to him before the rest of the cameras got there, and I asked him how he was feeling in that moment, and he said, lost and you talk about that fan Andrew right and, and his reaction I'm curious to, to ask you the same thing you know from a personal standpoint how you're faring because this is certainly not an easy story to cover I think a lot of people over the last 24 hours are coming to terms with this in different ways as far as the trauma that they witnessed firsthand but this is something that you do regularly and, and I'm sure you've never experienced or, or witnessed anything like this I haven't Lindsay and it's a really good question because my text messages, my phone has been blowing up the last 24 hours, not just from people that I need to communicate with about this story, but close friends, family, and that's been their number one question. How are you? Are you doing okay? Are you taking care of yourself? And I have to be honest, 
as a reporter, this is what we do. Uh, it, we, we don't want to be talking about these stories, telling these stories, but we jump right in and we and we go after it. And so that that didn't register for me for a long time last night and even this morning, it didn't register that I did need to think about things. And I did have a moment uh, early this morning where I said, you know what, I need to call someone. And I, at 5 a.m., called a friend of mine who lives in the central time zone who was awake at 4 a.m. And I said, I just need you to listen right now, just like these players, because uh, what they witnessed firsthand right in front of them is something that's going to remain with them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, glad uh, that you had that, that person that was able to answer the phone call for you at 4 a.m. And I'm sure a lot of people are, are doing the same in the name of, of self-care. National ESPN reporter Coley Harvey, we thank you so much for coming on and joining us tonight. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.